Any law against it? There is when you're stealing them off of somebody else's property. You calling me a thief? about that load of trees they just cut from Jack Holt's property. Oh, we were cutting on the range next to his. It's legal, we leased it. How do we know where the property line ends? Hi, Bullet. Hello, Roy, where you been hey. the last couple of weeks? Been up in the mountains on a little inspection tour. Looks like your boys picked on the wrong guy to start a fight with. Maybe I better introduce you. This is Mitch McCall. Roy Rogers, local head of the U.S. Soil Conservation Service. Well, how are you, Rogers? Jack, I'll say one thing. He's really fighting on your side. All right, forget it, fellas, and get back to work. Mr. Holt, as long as you're here, maybe we can talk business. Since I talked to you last, I got some backing. Big backing. I make the contracts for the Aldridge Company. Aldridge, I heard of him. They call him King of the Christmas Tree. That's right. It's a big outfit, Jack. Cutting trees on all the ranches around here. Well, I will probably move this camp two or three times. Sorry, Mitch, but I'm going to do my own cutting and hauling. But if we do the work, all you got to do is sit back and take half the profits. Jack doesn't want a profit. He's selling his trees for just what it cost him to raise them. Yeah, that's what I told Roy when I planted these six years ago. You see that tree there? Yeah. Well, I'm going to sell that for 75 or 80 cents, as against 8 or 10 dollars that they usually bring. Mr. Holt, this could very easily run the Aldridge Syndicate right out of business. I made a little money in pictures, and that's why I'm ranching. Every family that wants a tree is going to get one. You know, you could go broke on that basis. I'm not interested in making a profit. If there is any, I'll give it to the children's home. Kids like that made it possible for me to become a star. Say, Roy, stop by the ranch, will you? I want to talk to you about hiring some men. All right, I'll ride along with you. Okay, let's get out of here, Charlie. Hey, sis, listen to this. That's bad. Yeah, well, if you think that's bad, watch this. Now, I know there's something wrong somewhere, but I can't put my finger on it. I know what's wrong. You do? Sure. The toast is too brown. Hey, Splinters, 
Can I use the phone? Oh, sure, Mitch. Right ahead. Hello? Give me a long distance. I'm sorry, Mr. Aldridge is too busy to see now, you. Now, get this straight. Tell the railroad I want 20 cars, and I don't want alibis, I want action. All I've been getting down there is alibis, alibis, alibis! Hello, Miss Aldridge. The old boy on a rampage again? The usual. Well, Dad, I'm back. So I see. Just got off the plane with a late coming in. Did you get those contracts? Signed, sealed, and delivered. After I talked to the mayor, they decided to use Aldridge parking meters. Mr. Aldridge. Yes? Mitch McCall from Glen Rock calling about those Christmas trees. It's about time you checked in. Did you sign up those ranches yet? All but one. There's one I can't get. Jack Holtz. I thought I told you to be sure to get Holt. Tie up the whole market. If his trees ever go on sale at cheap prices, our dealers will all be canceling their orders. I just talked to Holt. I'm telling you, he won't sell. Let me talk to him. This is Toby Aldrich. I'll take care of selling Mr. Holt. I'll meet you in Glen Rock tomorrow. You better make it to Grove just before you get into town. The squares are putting on a turkey shoot, and the law will be there. Jack Holt included. The Grove it is. I'll have a contract for those trees before he knows what's happened. Okay. <laughs> At least there's some satisfaction in having a daughter with a business head on her shoulders. Just looking out for the Aldridge interests. It's an old habit of mine. <laughs> turkey shoot. Oh, hello, Miss Aldridge. Oh, how'd you know? Well, you're a stranger, and someone left this ticket for you. Oh, well, thanks. <laughs> All right, Roy, let her go. Okay. Hey. Hey, what kind of shooting do you call that? I must be using slow shot. <laughs> Come on, help me reload these things. Shh. Hey, go around the other way. Come on, get out of there. Don't offer me that way. And besides, what are these steps for? All right, then, hurry up. Good evening, miss. I think good morning. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, nervous, you know. Very beautiful stranger around here, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> hey. Looks like you got your tail feathers clipped. If I thought you did this, I'd purpose. Honest. <laughs> now that we have the spectators off the range, we'll go on with our final contestants. Last shot, knocked this one down, the jerky's ours. Oh, I hurt my shooting arm. Oh, but I wish I could. <laughs> this bird would sure look good on our big round table. Round table? We'll name him Sir Galahad, the knight of the round table. We can't take any chances on this. Get out of my way. <laughs> Let him loose, I'm ready. Keep your feathers crossed, Sir Galahad. You've practically got a new home. Okay? Let him loose. Good afternoon, Miss Aldridge. I'm Mitch McCall. Oh, I know how you know me. Only a flatland foreigner would be stupid enough to walk in the middle of a local turkey shoot. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That was mighty fine shooting, sis. I suppose you're gonna have them on the table for Christmas. You bet. I'll fatten up Sir Galahad till he can't walk. You're invited, too. I'll give you a drumstick. It isn't every turkey that gets to be eaten by a movie star. Oh, <laughs> but I was a movie star long before you were born. But we've got television. <laughs> yes, I know. That's Holt. Let's see how easy it is to sign him up on the dotted line. Mr. Holt, did we have your autograph? You bet. May I? Watch. You might pick up a few pointers. J. 
Gee, kids, this is a real compliment. I've seen a lot of your pictures, Mr. Holt. Well, it isn't often that I'm asked for an autograph by such a big girl. Do you really want it? Of course. Well, shall I put something personal, something about flying saucers? <laughs> <laughs> That old sun's a-shining, and there's no need for pining. Throw away your troubles, be happy and free. Greet all your neighbors with a good, good morning. Everybody's welcome at the hometown Jubilee. Jubilee at the Jubilee. What a happy gathering it will be. Jubilee at the Jubilee. Gonna wear a smile all the while at the hometown jubilee. Awake in the morning, there's a new day of morning. Sing and be happy, and I'm sure that you'll agree that life will be sunny with its silver lining. Everybody's welcome at the hometown jubilee. Hoopileo, bama hoopileo. Need a key, a leg with total a star. Hoopileo, bama hoopileo. Gonna wear a smile all the while at the hometown hoopileo. Jubilee at the Jubilee. What a happy gathering it will be. Jubilee at the Jubilee. We'll hear the news and chase the blues at the hometown Jubilee. Hometown Jubilee. Hey, it looks like Miss Aldridge is doing all right. Aldridge? Mr. Holt, you were really great in Avengers of the West. Is that who she is? Yeah, always has her picture in the paper. You were wonderful in all of them. Thank you, thank you. Roy, come on over and sit down. Hey, I think you two have met. Have you managed to buy his Christmas trees yet, Miss Aldridge? Aldridge? As a matter of fact, I was going to ask about the trees. You see, I'm sure you know so little about the Christmas market. I think I'm about to learn. But there are so many problems for an independent. Getting experienced crews in, wagons to haul the trees, dealers to sell them. Oh, I don't think we'll have any trouble getting men and wagons. The cowboys around here will be happy to pick up some extra money. Guess that answers your question, Miss Aldridge. Well, don't say I didn't warn you. Thanks for the sandwich. You're welcome. How could she be such a sore head on such a nice day? Look at that prize. Did you see Sis on the firing line? Just as cool as a cucumber. <laughs> How's the recruiting going? Fine. Start work tomorrow. Oh, good. We're counting on you for Christmas dinner, Roy. Save you a drumstick. Thanks. The way you're giving drumsticks away, first prize should have been a centipede. <laughs> Hello, Miss Aldridge. I thought you'd be finished cutting in the scroll by now. Don't forget, you're working on a percentage. If whole screw gets their trees to market before we do, it's money out of your pocket, too. Oh, now, look, if you'd have bought those trees like you said you was gonna, there wouldn't have been any need for any race. Never mind, I know all about that. Oh, forget about that, just kidding. But our trees will be first on the market. I'll make sure about that. I'll see you, Miss Aldridge, I'm busy. Fine. Keep them going, boys. We've only got three days left to get them to market. Look out, you don't bruise that down there. Hello, Roy. Hi, Jack. Don't thin them out too much, boys. Leave some of them for drainage. I'll watch them. Hey, you're coming along fine. Jack. Yeah, we're doing all right.
goes our water. Looks like somebody hit it with an axe. Yeah. Someone from Mitch's camp is down here. That's all the tree cutting for today. It's five miles to the nearest water, and we can't work horses without water. It's a tough break with so little time left. I'll get splinters to fix it. Boy, you come with me, and we'll see if we can't get some more water out of here. Did everybody show up this morning? As far as I know. Good. Boy, you better leave somebody here to watch camp. All right, Roy. All right, let's get going. Getting a late start this morning. Yeah, here comes Willing. Ten bucks, he says, to keep our eye on that water they brought in last night. Channing, stick around and keep your eye on that water. When Splinter shows up, tell him to get busy on the water wagon. All right. wagon. You feed Galahad while I fix it. Don't you exercise him too much. I like plenty of meat on my drumstick. Cleaners. <laughs> what are they pouring all that water around for? Water? That's kerosene. Do you think they're gonna set fire to it and run it down to the other wagons? Oh, no, they wouldn't do that. If they do, that means Jack won't be able to get the trees to market. Yeah, no wagons. You stay here while I go for help. Right, you stay here while I go for help. Yeah, yeah,
That's another clue, Miss Aldridge. I started them this morning on the north slope. Everything's right on schedule. Why don't you go back to the city? There's too much money invested here, Mitch. I think I'll stick around. Besides, there's only a few more days. <laughs> What do you want, Rogers? Did you have a man by the name of Whitey Channing working for you? Sure, I did have. But I fired him the second day. Well, he went to work for the Jack Holt camp. And he did a first-class job of wrecking things. And if I find him here, I'll... What would he be doing here? Well, the last time I saw him, he was headed this way. I don't want to seem impudent, Mr. Rogers. But is that part of your job, riding around for Jack Holt? I'm trying to help Jack the same as I would anybody else who comes to my office asking advice. But you're a government man taking sides. I might even decide to report to you. Oh, is that so? Well, let me tell you something, young lady. I might decide to turn you over my knee like a spoiled six-year-old and... All right, fellas, help me throw him out of here. Looks like you're going to have to throw him out yourself. Unless you want me to help you. Morning. If anything else happens to Jack Holt's camp, I'll bring the sheriff back out here and close you down. Come on, Bullet. And for your information, there was another man riding with Channing. His horse fell on him and killed him. Better stay out of this, Miss Aldridge. The sheriff's gonna be here and there's gonna be trouble. And you don't seem to handle trouble very well, do you? I am Mitch. Channing. I heard what Rogers said about Driscoll getting killed. They'll be looking for you and they're gonna ask questions. That's if I'm still around. Wait a minute. I got one more job for you on your way out of town. We made a mistake trying to slow up that other crew. We should have been working on Jack Holt. You can't do anything now. They'd know who it was. Just leave it to me. You'll be in town tonight in front of Roger's office. You figured an angle, huh? I usually do, don't I? And stay out of sight. <laughs> Where you with that turkey morning, noon, and night. So what are you don't sleep with him? So what? You slept with the horse one. Well, I had to. It was his blanket. Hey, there's somebody in Roy's office. Well, there's nothing they can steal there except some seed pamphlets. Are you going to investigate or do I have to? I'll go. I don't know the meaning of the word fear. Well, I don't even know the meaning of the word cowardice. You don't even know the meaning of the word cat. Well, what I lack in brains, I make up for in ignorance. Are you going over there or not? Well, I want to see somebody in the livery stable. Who? Me. <laughs> well, I'm going over there and see who's in Roy's office. Now, wait a minute. It's too dark, and I know every stone in this street. All right, stick him up, stick him. Channing? Yeah, Channing. What are you doing in Roy's office? I don't know. The last I remember, I was outside the hotel, waiting. Sis! Coming! Don't 
be afraid, Splinters. I'm here. He's been stabbed. Dead in a doornail. Well, what do we do? You stay here. I'll go for the sheriff. Right. You stay here. I'll go for the sheriff. Yeah, that's what I said. Pick up one, Mr. Aldridge. It's your daughter. Hello, Toby. You better get down here and quick. If you think we've had trouble, wait until you hear this. Now there's been a murder. A murder? Well, who was it? Well, how did it happen? One of Jack Holt's crew. Nobody knows who did it. The county sheriff is down here now to question both camps. Oh, I don't know whether I can make it or not. You know how busy I am. Well, I'll, I'll have to let you know later. All right. Goodbye, Toby. Ouch! What are you trying to do, stab me? I should have known Mitch would fall down on that job. I never did like him, never trusted him. You've never seen him. He came to work for us while you were back at the Wall Street That's office. all the more reason. I wish I knew what he was up to. I know what I'll do. I'll just take a little vacation and find out for myself. But Mr. Aldrich, what about that oil deal? Where will I send your calls? What will I tell the salesman? The doctor's been advising this for a long time. A nice long rest in the country. Where'd that old dog come from? I put him on this morning. He came up here asking for a job. Don't just hire anybody that comes up looking for work. He might have been sent up here to watch us. He might be a plant. He looked okay to me. Let me go for now. Here comes Roy and the sheriff. Let me do the talking. Good morning, sheriff. Well, the traveling inquest, I suppose. That's right. I don't want to take anybody off the job unless I have to. What? That was too bad about Channing. Find out anything yet, Sheriff? I'm still working on it. Any of you ever see this before? Oh, sure, that's a stripping knife. Probably a couple of dozen of them around here. Well, this one killed Channing. It was found behind the Glen Rock Hotel this morning. And no fingerprints. Why come up here asking us about it? Yes. Why don't you ask Mr. Rogers who killed him? Well, how should I know? You came up here looking for him, saying he'd wrecked Jack Holt's camp. You made threats about what you'd do if you caught up with him. And that fits in. Because his body was found outside your office. If Rogers didn't do it, then it was somebody else from the other camp. Well, I'm checking on that angle, too. I'm giving you and Jack Holt's crew the same order. I don't want anybody leaving the county. That goes for you, too, Rogers. I'll be here, Sheriff. And we'll be here. If you see your friend Holt, tell him we're right on schedule and we're already bundling our trees. I'll tell him. You don't think they'll hook us up with that Channing deal? Not a chance. Our trees are going to be first on the market. As soon as the dealers pay off, we take right on out. I didn't hear you mention Aldrich in that deal. That's right, you didn't. All right, Pop. How long you been here? I heard you talking. I know you did. Sounds to me like you could use my professional services. <laughs> What gives you this bright idea? Yeah, the blistered hands, and a five-year term in jail, liking the usual rot pile. Hard labor doesn't seem to be up my alley. What do you think? It won't take long to find out. Come on, get back to work. Better take him with us today. He heard too much. Yeah, today's a big day if we're going to beat Holt's outfit. He's got the whole town working for him. Get his trees tied, ready to take to market. Look. Keep an eye on him till we leave. Well, this is the last load, Jack. Any trouble, Roy? Not a bit. Why don't you step down and have some coffee? I'll be right with you as soon as I water trigger. Okay.
It looks like the whole town's here. I can't find any of my patients. Everybody's in there. They're all helping me. Come on in and have some coffee. You know, you could be put in jail for trying to break in a place like that. Closed. Gone to Jack's Christmas tying party. What's going on around here? I'm expecting a telegram. I think the sign speaks for itself. Everybody in town's pitching in to help Jack. Haven't you heard of the race that's going on between the Aldridge camp and the Holt camp? They're trying to beat each other to market with their trees. Come on, here you go. You're doing a swell job, sis. The tree looks great. Still pretty thin in the middle here. Roy, the coffee's over there. Good. Well, Miss Aldridge, we didn't expect you here, but you're certainly welcome. Is the telegraph operator here? Yes. He's right over there. Thank you. Independent sort of a girl, but I rather like her. Pardon me. Oh, just in time, Miss Aldrich. Here, hold this. I'm not in the mood for joking. Did that telegram arrive yet for my father? Didn't see it. Well, how do you expect to get it standing here? I don't. Well, it's nice to see that somebody has a lot of friends. Mitch! Okay, boy, shoot the works. Come on, Pop. You look worried. It's about a whole beating this market for those trees. You can forget it. It isn't that, Mitch. I called my father's office and they said he left two days ago. They thought he might be headed this way. Have you seen him? I wouldn't know him if I did see him. I never met him. Well, he's a little bald and wears glasses. Wait, I'll show you. It was taken last year down at the beach. It's the only picture we ever had taken where he was smiling. He'll show up. He probably get delayed someplace. Well, if you see him, will you tell him I'm inside waiting for that telegrapher to open his office? Get your hands up. I'm turning you and Mitch over to the sheriff. What do we do with him? Where did you hear who he is? Get him back to his horse. I'll take care of this and the stable. Come on, Pop. Boy, sure like Galahad. Smart dog. What does he like? Light or dark meat? <laughs> I was just kidding. Some folks grumble the year around. Never spread a word of cheer. But they're bound to lose that big old frown If they try one thing this year Get a Christmas tree for Johnny For Jimmy, Jane, and Sue Get a Christmas tree for Johnny If he's two or ninety-two When a Christmas tree is gleaming Its lights all bright and gay then you know each heart starts screaming how Santa's on his way. You'll hear their merry voices sing the carols old and dear. Then every care the world may bring will fade and disappear. Get a Christmas tree for Johnny, that's all you have to do. Get a Christmas tree for Johnny and the world will smile at you. You'll hear their merry voices sing the carols old and dear. And every care the world may bring will fade and disappear. Get a Christmas tree for Johnny, that's all you have to do. Get a Christmas tree for Johnny and the world will smile at you. Yeah, that makes me happy, too. 
No. <laughs> Folks, I got a big surprise. Jack has loaned us one of his old pictures to run for you as a little entertainment. So gather around. Douse the lights over there, will you, Joe? About Jack? The doc's over there now talking to splinters. How's the loading coming along? All right. If nothing else happening, these wagons will be ready to roll right on time. Good. Got some bad news, Roy. Doesn't look like Jack's gonna pull through. Yes, that smoke was more than his lungs could stand. Well, would it be all right if we rode out the scene? Well, sure. Go ahead. But he seems to be in sort of a coma. Keeps saying it's Christmas. We'll just let him go on thinking so. Well, that's the idea. 
I'll be out there every minute I can spare. Thanks a lot, Doc. I heard what the doctor said. I'm sorry, Roy. This means Jack won't get to see all the poor families enjoying his Christmas trees. Why don't we put on a Christmas dinner and tell Jack the trees have already been delivered? Yes, why not? He thinks it's Christmas anyway. Turkey and the trimmings, the whole works. Gee, that's a good idea. Oh, splinters, you wouldn't. <laughs> We've got to, sis. It's for Jack. I suppose so. I could do the cooking. If you wanted me to. Well, that would be swell. Swell. My friend. Goodbye, Gallagher. Oh, now, sis, don't take it so hard. Here today, gone tomorrow. Meat on the table. And I remember some words from the book. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to pay tribute to one whose life upon this earth has been one of consummate chastity and free of sin. And that which is put upon this earth must be taken away. And if that ain't a fair and square deal, I'm a horn toad. So let us forego the sadness and tears for one who is going to a better life in the great barnyard beyond. <laughs> They say Christmas comes but once a year But don't you believe it's so That's only a story you may hear From those who just don't know that Every day is Christmas in the way in the way There's always an evergreen tree nearby And always stars like ornaments in the sky Nature makes a present of each softly carol on their way There you'll find the true kind of love the Lord above express For every day is Christmas in the way Merry Christmas! Oh, that's great. Now, remember, don't slip up. Yes, sir, you're glad you're feeling better, Jack. Oh, I'm feeling a lot better. But tell me, did you get the trees into the city on time? Well, we... Oh, you should have seen it. Sold out almost before we could get them off the wagons. That's what I've been waiting to hear. That makes Christmas perfect. You kids better get in the dining room and eat your dinner while it's hot. I'll open my presents later. Good. <laughs> I'm, hungry. I'm hungry, too. Bong, bong, bong. I guess our visiting lady can sit here. Thank you. Hey, Toby, I didn't know you could cook like that. Well, I helped her a lot. Neither did I. It's the first time I ever tried. Oh, save us the wishbone. <laughs> Go on, sis. The turkey's waiting. Yeah, my turkey. Now, what part of this beautiful fine bird would you care for, sis? A big old fat drumstick? Oh, well, how can you eat him? You, you cannibal! And what'll you have, Toby? Gee, it seemed like only yesterday that I helped to get him down from the blacksmith's roof. Yeah, come to think about it, he and Bullet were sure good friends. That's right. Well, I never did care very much for turkey anyway. Pass, Pass the beans. beans. Well, looks like Bullet and I are going to eat this whole beautiful bird. Here, boy. Here. You too? Say, what 
What's the matter with all of you? Oh, you think it's Galahad? Come, 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 come! <laughs> I knew you wouldn't. You're too tender-hearted. <laughs> now, you sit down, sis, and dig in. Oh, I couldn't. It might be Galahad's brother. Oh, no. It's probably just a cousin or something like that. Hey, maybe he is his brother. <laughs> Would anybody else care to carve? Come on over here. Blow. Don't be sad. Think of all of those little children that are enjoying our Christmas trees. What was that story you told me about the little Christmas tree that wouldn't grow up? I've forgotten it. The poor little tree is so anxious to go out and make its way in the world, but the mother tree kept saying not to be in such a hurry. But somebody came along and took it home for a Christmas tree. That little tree was so happy, all dressed up in gold and silver, children dancing around it and saying how beautiful it was. But Christmas was soon over. The day after the little tree was thrown out, everybody forgot all about it, except the mother tree who called out from the forest. You thought you knew what all the boys said. You were too smart to take anybody's advice. Now you'll never see your family again. <laughs> I guess it's too late to be asking advice. About what? I just know something's happened to my father. Oh, hi, Doc. Hi, Doc. Sit down. Time for some turkey. Yeah. Sit down over there. Yeah, I want to talk with you, Roy. Sure. What's the matter? I just came from Ed Geary's house. He was badly beaten up. Beaten up? Well, who did it? Well, they jumped him in the dark. He didn't recognize any of them. Ed was supposed to drive one of Jack's wagons. All the drivers are quitting, Roy. Every last one of them. They don't want to spend Christmas in the hospital. Gee, that means we'll never get those trees delivered. We'll ride out to some of the other ranchers and see if we can't get some more help. Well, I wish you luck, Roy, but after that fire and this, everybody's badly frightened. If we could only prove who's doing this. Close the door, Doc. Splinters, I'm going out and see Ed. You fellas see if you can't round up somebody who'll give us a hand. Sure. Okay, all right. I saw bones fly twice in one day. Do you think I'm going to die? I just thought I'd drop in and give you a checkup, Jack. Don't worry, child. They'll get the trees delivered. Can you really know what day it is? Of course. The Orbanac is never wrong. It says here, a white Christmas, and I don't see any snow outside. I let Roy think he was putting one over on me. Now he can't let me down. He'll have to get the trees to the children. <laughs> you even had me fooled. <laughs> but what the doctor told... Gee, you know a lot of Western stars. Yep, all old friends of mine. Do you think they could drive a wagon? Any cowboy can drive a team. Why? Oh, nothing. I got a hunch I'm going to meet all of you. Where to? Get into town and get word to me if they get drivers for those wagons. So we'll know what to do about it. Okay, see you later, Mitch. Second thought. As soon as we cross that Red River Bridge, how about I burn it? What about Aldridge? Hold him here. And keep him out of sight. Talked to every rancher we could find. Couldn't get a one. Well, you can't blame them, I suppose. None of them want to spend Christmas in the hospital. Roy, this is going to be a pretty big loss for Jack. If it can help any, I'll make an offer to buy his trees. Well, at least you wouldn't have any trouble getting them to market. Well, that's better than nothing. They're already cut and you can't sell Christmas trees on the 4th of July. Except for firewood, maybe. Well, I don't know what to say. If you knew how long Jack had been planning on getting those Christmas trees to the kids and all the hard work he'd put in. Hey, look, a stranger in town. Hello, Roy. 
Well, Rocky Lane. I heard Jack Holt was in some kind of a jam. Thought maybe Blackjack and I could lend a hand. You sure can. Hey. Gee, Monty Hale. That's right. I came to help out, honey. Howdy, Roy. Hi, Monty. Thanks for coming. You know, I want to help, too. I'm Bill Farnham. Rode with Jack 20 years ago. Well, hiya, Bill. How are you, Roy? Hey, what's going on here? Who sent for you? No. A little girl's voice. A little girl? Sis? Yeah, it was me. I sat for him. For the first time, you did the right thing. Of course. Well, looks like you called a lot of Jack's friends. Howdy, Roy. I'm Crash Corgan. Remember me? I sure do, Crash. Say, what's all the excitement about? Hi, Rocky. Hello, Kermit. Roy, you know these boys. Kermit Maynard. Hi, Tom. How are you, Roy? Tom Keen here. Hi, Tom. Hello, Roy. You know Tom Tyler. Sure, hi. Hi, Roy. We heard there was a fight going on. Hiya, fellas. I'm Seth. Hello, Parker. Hi, Seth. What a fight this is gonna be. Hey, wait a minute. Who's that? that is. Hello, boys. I'm George Cheesebro. Hello, Roy. Hey, wait a minute. I know you. You're always a meanie. I know, but after making 20 pictures with Jack Holt, he reformed me, honey. Mm -hmm. Well, in that case, we can use him. Yeah. Hi, Roy. What are you doing here? There's no law against it, is there? I never saw a bullet act that way before. Easy, fella. Yeah. What are you snooping around for? Hey, Roy. It shouldn't be too hard to make him talk. Rocky, pretty good. Not bad, huh? Here's the way I used to do it. Reckon I need some practice, too. <laughs> A little high, Ray. I don't know what's holding it up. Ain't you nervous? Just two left, huh? Well, I always prefer the knife myself. Just in case it's dull, I'm ready. Wait a minute! I'll talk to you, Rogers. All right. You can start in by telling us who killed Whitey Channing. Okay. The way you feel about it, I think I'll take my turn. Don't do that. It was Mitch. Where is he now? Where's my father? He's out of camp. Mitch left a guard watching him. Phone the sheriff and tell him to get a posse ready. Hold him until he gets here. All right, fellas, get those wagons rolling. Not you, Splinters. We can't let her ride up to that camp alone. Rex Allen. There's our driver for the last wagon. Yeah. Hi. Hi, Rex. Hi, Roy. Am I too late to help? I'll say you're not. Who's in such a hurry? We are. We want you to drive a wagon for us. It'll be waiting for you in town, and thanks a lot. You betcha. <laughs>
anybody looking for me, I'm in here. Look, do you know who I am? I'm Jay Corwin Aldridge. Is he telling the truth? Never saw him before in my life. What? To quote the great Jay Corwin, an Aldridge can always take care of himself. Oh, shut up. Look, we've both been double-crossed, and if Holt's gonna get his trees to market, somebody's gotta get Mitch. He's gonna burn the Red River Bridge. What? Go on, get going! cost me just a quarter of a million dollars, but it was worth it. From now on, we're partners, and we'll be selling trees so cheap, they'll think we're giving them away. <laughs> Get out off there before I wring your scrawny neck. You're gonna what? Oh, I was only kidding. Yeah? You know that I just love old Galahad. Skylarks softly carol on their way. Hey, it's beginning to snow. I better go check those drift fences. I'll see you later. Oh,